Hello, my name is Tom Boley. Today we are up here in northern Wisconsin on the shores of the majestic Chippewa Flowage, and we're gonna be targeting the elusive muscalunge. Very elusive fish, and fall is a great time to get up here and target some of these fish. We're gonna be utilizing a pattern which I have created over the last several years, which is fall trolling. It's an incredibly popular way to catch fall muskies, and today we're gonna to go into a lot of the details on what makes fall trolling incredibly effective to catch muskies, as well as the ins and outs, what kind of structure we're looking for, what kind of baits we're using, and all these good things. So stay tuned, I think you guys are gonna like this one. It's gonna be exciting, and we're gonna catch a muskie. Here we are ready to fish. We are on the chip of flowage. We are targeting muskies. It is a windy fall day out, and uh, we're gonna start out, I believe, with a 10 inch jig. This guy right here, and we're gonna run a 13 inch grandma as well. And uh, we'll go into all our baits and spots and everything like that. But for right now, I just want to get out and start fishing. And uh, we're in a kind of a prove it spot to be here. And uh, we're gonna rake it for a few hours, see what happens. And uh, you know, a lot of times you might end up side imaging fish, kind of going over them, maybe catching a fish, or you know, you kind of go through an area. There's not a lot of bait. There's you know, you're not seeing anything on side imaging. Then you just kind of get out. But we'll just kind of play it by ear, drop some baits, and uh, we're gonna start trolling. We're probably gonna be trolling about three miles an hour, three and a half, somewhere right in there is gonna be a good speed. So I'm gonna shut up. Let's get these baits wet and start trolling. All right, so let's talk about baits real quick and terminal tackle. What kind of stuff are we using? What are we running? All that kind of good stuff. Well, kind of depending on where you go, the specifics on uh, basically lures might change a lot. Like you go to Green Bay and it's a lot, generally a lot of smaller stuff, a lot of shad size stuff. Um, a lot of your northern lakes, it is generally bigger crankbaits um, in the fall. And kind of some of my favorites here that we're going to walk through, baits that I have a lot of success on, trolling a lot of these lakes in northern Wisconsin late in the season like this. And what I'm talking about now, we have water temps that are 54, but the same stuff applies from now until the lake freezes up. This is kind of like my home run, my, my favorite baits that I, I, I run this time of year. And a lot of it is big stuff. So um, one of my absolute favorites is a 13 inch grandma. Now this bait catches fish everywhere. Um, and, I mean, it's just super popular for targeting big muskies late in the fall. It's kind of got a narrower wobble than some of the other crankbaits, but it's kind of subtle. Um, it does not have rattles, and uh, it's just a killer bait. It's real flat-sided like this, so it throws a lot of light around. Um, and a lot of times, your, your fall crankbaits are these flat-sided baits. That, you know, they just do a lot of this in the water, and that's what this one does. Um, super effective bait. I've caught a ton of big fish on this over the years, and one of my favorite baits for sure. One thing I will do is a lot of times I'll run just a uh, uh, split ring up there on the nose. Add that in. Some of the other favorites, very similar bait. This is a Jake. I will fish this in both the 10 inch size and uh, the 14 inch size. The 14 is kind of you know similar to that 13 inch grandma, obviously, but Jake's got a little bit different wobble to it. Um, you know, it comes in a couple different sizes. They make them smaller than 10, but a lot of times I run the 10 and 14. And uh, yeah, that's kind of one of my favorite uh, cranks, fall cranks as well. Jake's are incredibly popular in the fall bait. They're incredibly popular fall bait as well. And kind of another one which mixes it up, and this is kind of the goofier one of these three types of lures. This is a slammer deep minnow, and it has a very steep dive curve. And uh, basically, this thing is real clunky when you pull it. Um, you'll watch, you know, these jakes and these grandmas. You'll watch your rod tip when the bait's going, and it's just kind of going to be going like this: ding, 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 ding. This one, when you pull it, it's a lot more like real hard it's a real hard digging bait but it's got this big round lip on it and it gets down very quick much quicker than like a jake or a grammar or something like that so a lot of times if you're running multiple lines one good tip is to keep this on your inside or right behind the boat rod and uh, basically this thing on less line is going to get down to fish that contour you want and i've caught a ton of fish on this 10 inch slammer deep minnow um, especially in that color right there and uh, just a killer way to fish. So between these three baits, this is a lot of what I use in the fall. Um, and a lot of, I mean, these are my three favorite fall trolling baits. Um, your grandmas, your jigs, and that 10 inch deep slammer minnow. Um, if you load up on those three baits, you are definitely gonna be in the game uh, for catching fall muskies.
right, guys, we are hooked up. First one of the day. I don't know if think he's super big. No, he's not big. Crazy wind. Keep him coming, Mitchell. And you're obviously going to have to walk backwards for me. Man, that was a weird bite. It was like he popped it and like whipped out to the side. Very strange. You want me to go in gear or just stay still? I think we got him. All right, here it comes. Nice, fat little floats chunker. Oh, look at him go, Mitchell. Oh, now he's all angry. He's all angry. <laughs> all right, all right. Here he is. Got him. There we go. First fall trolling fish of the season, buddy. Give me. Heck yeah, dude. Well, we're on the board. And that is super funny because I absolutely love 13 inch grandmas. And Mitch, I was like, Mitch, you gotta buy this one. It's super golden, it's beautiful really looking. It is, yeah. And it was literally in the water for like four minutes probably. And we got a muskie on it. Awesome, we'll give you guys a look. All right, number one in the bag. I'll give you guys a look here, what we got this one on. Super weird hit, I'm excited to look. I'm excited to look back and watch how he actually bit on GoPro because it was like boom boom and then he just like went slack. I don't know if he was coming at us or what he was doing. He's hooked kind of right on the outside of the beak here. I'll give him a nice little shake and he should pop off. He got one more in the side here. There we go. He's off in the net. And there we go. Talk to me. Yeah, nice fish, man. My, my first one trolling for the year. Like I, like Tom said, brand new bait. It worked. Beautiful color. Nice fat fish. Or hopefully three, four more, huh? Yeah. All feeding windows can be intense. Just a fat fish. Just a belly on him. He's gonna go right there away. You go. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. On the nice board. Shot, man. Let's do it again. All trolling, musky fishing. Love watching rods go off and just a beautiful place to come do this. Big, expansive, perfect place to come trolling in the fall. And uh, yeah, we're gonna work on another one. All right, so what kind of spots are we looking for fishing basically? Well, there's kind of two kinds of areas which are basically looking for this time of year. One, we kind of touched on it a little bit. It's big neck down areas, right? So obviously you have a big expansive, you know, basin area like this, either on a big natural lake or on a big flowage, something like that. And a lot of times what you'll have happen is that whole basin will neck down into a much skinnier area that'll generally have a deeper channel and it'll run for, you know, it might be 100 yards long, might be 500 yards long, might be a mile long, whatever the case. Those neck downs are great fall spots. You have a lot of concentration of bait in there and because of that you obviously have a whole bunch of predators like muskies in there. You're going to look at your map and it's going to look something like this right here. You got a big open basin and it funnels down into a confined area like this. And a lot of times what you see is uh, just like today, our fish come off little points in these neck downs, right? And that's exactly where we caught uh, Midge's fish so far today. And, uh, and that's something you just see over and over and over the more and more you do this. Um, so neck downs, anywhere you go in the fall, pretty much for any kind of fish is a productive area. Now, the other thing we're looking for is uh, a lot of big interconnected structure around deep water, which is actually what we're trolling right now. And what I mean by that is a lot of points, um, a lot of humps, um, a lot of shorelines that are interconnected. And I'll kind of, it's kind of hard to explain. So I'll kind of throw up a map right here. You can see like maybe you're coming down this edge, you come out around this point, and then you cup out to this hump. Things that look like this, where you kind of keep connecting all these things, you know, for several hours on end, are good areas. And one thing to remember in the fall is that you want to be fishing big open water basins. So that's a lot of times what I've, I spend most of my time focusing on. Um, you know, we just came out of like September, and September's a notorious shallow water time of year. Well, what you have happen as water starts to get colder in the mid 50s, is fish push out to some of this deeper area and they'll relate to the breaks of a lot of this structure. And all we're doing right now is raking a ton of these breaks, of points, of humps, of shorelines, a lot of this stuff that's interconnected around these big basins with deep water, right? And a lot of days you can kind of tell when an area is good because you'll see a lot of bait up on that break. In a flowage system, you might be looking at crappies. In your deep clear lakes in northern Wisconsin, you might be looking at Cisco's or you know perch that are roaming around out in the basin. 
And if a lot of that bait is packed up against a brake line, um, you know, that's kind of what we're looking for. And we're basically trolling in like 12 to 17 feet of water right now. And we're just following these brakes. And one thing you'll notice is I keep always smashing into the brakes. We're bouncing bottom with the baits a lot. We're making a lot of contact. This isn't like a crisp, clean pass, right? You're limited to two lines, um, one line a guy on this lake trolling. And uh, I'd be, you know, spreading lines wouldn't, I don't think it would really help you that much. All you're trying to do is bang into that break, bang out. And you're just kind of constantly zigging and zagging back and forth. And uh, one huge tool that'll help you out is auto chart. Hummingbird, um, you know, auto charting all the stuff so you have the absolute best map you can have is a huge tool. Green and gold. Talk to me. Is that gonna get done? We're, we are now running two 13 inch. Nobody can hear you. Oh my, just let me do my thing. All right, we're running two 13 inch grams right now. The lucky gold that I just bought and caught a fish on. So I know it works. And, and uh, what is it, what do you call this, green? Yeah, so I was actually out here two days ago and I lost two fish on a 13 inch gram and two, almost the same color as the one we caught that fish on today. So we got a 520 moonrise, it's 450 right now and we are in one of my bread and butter stretches. We just kind of ran off of some like, eh, this might be good stuff, like this is definitely good stuff right here. Which is, what do you got that at, about 45? Yeah, bring that in a little bit. Um, anytime you know you got moonrise coming up, you definitely want to make sure you're around fish. And unlike casting or sucker fishing or stuff like that, uh, you obviously don't get follows um, when you are trolling. So um, that should have been obvious. Probably didn't have to say that part. But so yeah, we're in a big time confidence area here, and uh, moonrise coming up. I'm hoping this is kind of a big fish area, so I'm kind of hoping we crack like a 47 on this pass, Mitchell. Um, but we'll see. It's game time. Rolling. Yes, sir. All right. Well, that is going to do it for today's video. Unfortunately, we did not get a second shot, but even better than that, we got a shot and we capitalized on it. And Mitchell caught a nice chip of flowage muskie up here in the Hayward area. Um, fall troll is a super effective way. Hopefully you guys kind of enjoyed watching this video. Um, it was kind of, we mainly kind of did it just to kind of give you guys some of the pointers and what I like to do. Um, none of this is set in stone like the rules or the law or anything. This is just how I like to do it. Um, and it definitely catches fish. We've been doing it for years and it's a great way to catch fish. It pretty much works everywhere. Um, so if you're not sure, or you just want to get out and try a new technique this fall, definitely try some trolling. Plenty of time left. This is one of those techniques that's definitely best for me when the water temp like bottoms out. Uh, so once we start getting water temps like below 50 degree range and that 40 to freeze up is ideal time a lot of times. But uh, there's still kind of a mix of some fish a little bit shallow, some fish in between and some fish deep. So um, trolling's an effective way obviously just to cover a lot of water. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm not sure what we're gonna be doing next. Um, but stay tuned for more content. If you're not yet, please subscribe. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, uh, we have a cool new sweatshirt. I'll throw a picture up right here called Embrace the Suck Musky Sweatshirt. Um, it's a saying that is kind of uh, notorious all over for a whole bunch of different things, but it's very fitting for musky fishing. Embrace the suck, go through the tough fishing, and uh, get the reward at the end of the tunnel. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to pick up that sweatshirt, I'll go ahead and link it down below, and I uh, appreciate that. We'll see you guys next time.